acephysics.org. Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. H. acephysics.org. Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis. It's nice to see everybody in physics today. This is outstanding. Okay, so today's lab, we're learning about spectroscopy. So every atom on the periodic table gives off its own color. It's got like a fingerprint. So just like everyone in this room is individual and you have your own fingerprint, every atom has its own fingerprint as well. And so, for example, hydrogen, here's a hydrogen atom and it has um, one proton in the center and an electron cloud outside of the center. And so a hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. And so if you heat up, if you have a gas of hydrogen and you heat it up, the electron, which is normally in the lowest orbital, these are called orbitals, will jump to a higher orbital. And then at some point it will fall back down and it will give off a certain light. And so if it goes from the second orbital to the first orbital, it gives off one color of light. And if it goes from the third orbital to the first orbital, it gives off another color of light. And so this is for hydrogen. If you had a different atom, for example, lithium or oxygen or neon, they all have their own set of colors that they give off. And so every atom is unique in that way, and that's how you can tell one atom from another. And that's what we're going to be discussing in this lab. So it is interesting to note that 73% of the universe is hydrogen, and that's consistent with um, nucleosynthesis of the Big Bang. Why do you think it is that we know, how do you think we know that every atom or that 73% of the universe is hydrogen. Does anybody know how that's known? We as a human race have figured that out. Does anyone know how that is? It's because hydrogen has its own fingerprint. That's what I'm saying here. And so when we look into the sky, we being astronomers, not me, we look up into the sky and you can see uh, light coming to you, which is the light from hydrogen atoms. And so that's how we know 73% of the um, universe is made out of hydrogen. Now, the sun is 72% hydrogen and 26% helium. Then there's also small amounts of oxygen, carbon, neon, and iron. Iron has the highest binding energy per nucleon. And another thing that's interesting to note is the sun, at the center of the sun, it's 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. And at the outside edge of the sun, it's really a cold 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. How do you think people know that the sun is 27 million degrees on the inside and 10 million degrees on the outside. Anyone have any idea? The you know, what? The fingerprint of the atom. That, no, that's fantastic. It's really, that is the answer. And th this idea in science really is interesting. And because every atom has its own fingerprint, you can learn things like the temperature of the sun, what, uh, what the sun is made out of, what other, mainly what other stars are made out of, not what other planets are made out of. Okay. So from the previous lab, we learned that diffraction, for a diffraction grating, d sine theta is equal to n lambda, where a diffraction grating is, we have a diffraction grating. So this is a diffraction grating, and this diffraction grating has many, many slits, many lines per centimeter. So in this lab, there are these glass tubes with different atoms. There, there's a gas of atom inside here. The one, the one which is, has a white strip on here, this is mercury. Mercury is poisonous. So please don't break this. If you, you Don't break the other ones, although it's funny. In my last section, I told everyone don't break these, and someone dropped the whole entire, not the mercury, not the mercury. <laughs> it was really embarrassing for them. I, I tried to be nice about it. I actually felt bad for them. But however, <laughs> don't break the glass, especially the mercury, OK? And they dropped the whole thing, not of mercury, though. That if they had dropped mercury, we all would have had to leave because it, it's poisonous. OK, so this. Now let's, now let's look at the apparatus and let me explain what we're going to be doing. So um, this is a spectrometer. What's that? OK. This is a spectrometer. All right. Um, all right. I guess everyone's worried about being in um, film. That's fine. Here, here's a spectrometer. Um, each one of these was $5,000. I'm going to pause for a second and question why the physics department would spend that much money on this. Pick these up carefully and set them down carefully. <laughs> so now, 
Uh, okay, so here's, so what's happening, this is a high voltage, a high voltage supply. And this is the, um, the mercury source. So you take the mercury source and you put it in, and then I'm gonna turn this on. Now notice, actually I wanna say a few things here, this is interesting. So I put in the, the mercury, and you see, you see it's a certain color. Now, um, you can just keep looking over there. Okay. Uh, or whatever you wanna do. Um, okay, so in this lab, this is cool. You need to use one of these Michael Jackson gloves because it gets really hot. Okay, so now this is heating up. And so at some point you're going to want to take it out. So now I'm going to take it out. You don't want to take it out when the high voltage is on because that's just stupid. So you turn it off, remove it, don't break it. Actually you should put it away. And then you're, I'm going to put this other one in. I'm going to go over that in a second. Now I'm going to put this one in and turn it on. Now what did you notice between, there's gas, both of these have gas in them. Why is it that this looks different than this does? Different atoms, uh, the same thing, different frequencies, because different atoms give off different, they have their own fingerprint, but this is a very dramatic uh, example of that. So you're heating up the gas, what this is doing, this is sending a current through here and it's heating up the gas, and when the gas gets hot, it gives off its you know, frequency, and it has a set of frequencies, and so you notice that these are different. Hello, I'm Dr. Jacob Hudis. If you need math or physics tutoring, please go to my website, acephysics.org, and book a lesson. Okay, um, so the point of the lab is to try to figure out what, what the unknown uh, gases are. So mercury is the one that we know. So I'm going to go over a little overview of the concepts of today's lab, which I've written on the board. So what we're learning about, the lab's about radiation. So radiation is the release of high energy particles or rays called photons from un uh, unstable atoms uh, that makes them more stable. So as you all know, an atom has a small nucleus and a cloud of electrons on the outside, and the nucleus is about 100,000 times smaller than the atom. So, and also about 99% of the mass and all the energy is in the nucleus. Now if you look at a nucleus, a nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons, and the protons have a repulsive force, and they're all crammed together in a very small little radius. So you would think from your class from, Coulomb law, from Coulomb's law that the protons would want to push apart from each other because they have, there's a, a Coulomb force. But they don't push apart from each other because there's another force which is called the strong force. The strong force has another name called the color force, and that um, holds protons and neutrons together inside the nucleus, but it only acts over a very small distance. So inside of a nucleus, there's two forces acting. Pushing outwards is the electric force that you've all studied. There's this other strong force which pulls together. Um, but the strong force only acts over a distance of 10 to the negative 15 meters. Okay, the strong force is 10 to the 38th times stronger than gravity. So that's very, very strong. Now. Let's say that you take an atom, cesium, which happens to be the one that we're going to be looking at today. We're going to look at two atoms. So there's cesium 55, 137. So 55 means that it's cesium, it has 55 protons, and 137 is the mass number. So 137 minus 55 means it has 82 neutrons. So if you have a, um, there's something called beta decay. So beta decay is when a proton turns into a neutron. And so the beta decay reaction goes like this. The proton turns into a neutron, plus a, an electron, and something called an antineutrino, which you don't need to concern yourself with today, but that's part of the beta decay. So if you have a cesium-137-55, this is an isotope of cesium which is radioactive. It's unstable. So it's unstable because there's too many neutrons or too many protons, the nucleus is too big, and it's not stable, and so it's going to undergo a beta decay, which is radiation. So the cesium-137 atom beta decays into barium-137-56 and it gives off an electron and an antineutrino and this barium is in an excited state. So because it's in an excited state, the baryon then gives off a gamma ray. 
And so this is an example of radiation. If you had a whole bunch of cesium-137 atoms, which we will have here today, here is a container with little pellets of radioactive cesium-137 atoms. And right now, these are all given off radiation. You can't feel it, but it exists. OK. Um, all right. What's that? Oh, yeah. Any questions? Good. OK. Now, when, so, so this, um, this uh, gamma ray is something which is going to be emitted because these are radioactive. Are all atoms radioactive, would you say? No. There's only a certain set of atoms that are radioactive. and. Cesium-137 is one of them, there's many others, but all atoms are not radioactive, we're looking at some radioactive ones. Okay, so this gamma ray is released from the thick. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. And the gamma ray intera interacts with matter in three ways. There's something called the photoelectric effect. So this, if this cesium atom is placed near matter, so let's say, here is your um, cesium atom, and here's some matter. The cesium, this chunk of cesium atom will be, of uh, cesium atoms is going to be giving off these particles of radiation as this has, how many atoms would you say is in like a little chunk of cesium, roughly? Anybody have any idea? 10 to the 24th is Avogadro's number, so that's a good good number to keep in mind. And so 10 to the 24th is a huge number, and all these atoms in here are releasing radiation, and that, that mean, when it say they're releasing radiation, what I mean to say by that is the cesium atoms are decaying, they're changing to another atom, and then they're giving off these rays. The radiation comes and it hits a chunk of material. And how does that radiation interact with the material? There are three ways. It can knock off some electrons from that material. That's called the photoelectric effect. There's something called the Compton effect, where the radiation shoots out of the cesium, and it hits the material, and it um, scatters off of electrons in the material. And this is called the Compton effect. Now, there's something else called pair production. You can read about these in your lab today. Now, what we have in our lab today, this here is what is known as a scintillation detector, which I have drawn upside down here. So here's your scintillation detector, and the radiation is going to come, and it's going to hit this thing. It's going to hit this part of the detector, so we'll hit this. So you're going to have radiation come in, and it hits the sodium iodine crystal inside here. And when it hits the sodium iodine crystal inside there, one of these three interactions will happen, and then this crystal will give off light, and it will go through this glass photomultiplying tube and come out on the other side, and you'll be able to see that on the computer. These are very expensive. Inside of here is a glass tube, so don't just like drop this, you'll break the glass tube. I don't know how much they are, but supposedly it's like thousands of dollars, like a couple thousand dollars. Um, so be gentle with these, and you do that. Okay, so now, you're going to have a radioactive source above here, and you're going to be able to detect radiation, and in this lab, you're going to get a plot which looks like this. So this is the radiation plot from um, the cesium atom. 